Hi, it's Greg Hughes with 90 Second Website Builder. One of the first things I like to do when I'm building a website, in the design process, I sometimes like to start with my background. I can decide what the background of a particular page is gonna look like pretty easily in 90 Second Website Builder. And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you specifically about backgrounds. Of course, a background has to do with the page, the page properties. And so we can go to the page menu up here and you'll see there's actually a background tool. We can just click on this button right here and we can affect our background. There's a lot of different ways you can add a background. If you just wanted to use a solid color, you could do that. You could choose a color from the palette and make that be your background. Or you could use gradient colors, colors that gradiate. So in this case, a light blue that gradiates to whatever color that is. And we can change the direction that it gradiates with. And we have sort of a gradient. Now these options should be pretty easy and obvious to mess around with. You can see that there's multicolor gradients, there's patterns, there's textures you can add, there's a menu of textures that you could use as your background. But one of the things I like to do is use an image for my background. So let me go turn this off. I'm gonna go back to a solid color, white, and that gets rid of this background. But I wanna show you something else. Another way to get to the background settings, since the background is part of the page properties, is to go to the page properties area. And one of the reasons you would wanna do that is because when you work in the page properties and under the style tab, you can work with the background more specifically. There's a few more options you can use. And so this is a good way to do it. By the way, another way to get to the page properties is to right click on the canvas and go down to page properties, okay? So however you get there, we're gonna be working with the background settings under the style tab. And again, we have our solids, our gradients, and our patterns and all that, but I'm gonna be working with an image. So let's try making a background that's based on an image. Now you'll notice as soon as I change the mode to image, it gives me the opportunity to go find the image that I wanna use. So I click on this and I find some kind of image I wanna use in my background. So in my case, I wanted to use one for this demonstration. That looks like this, some red checkers. So here's my image, the path to it, and I'm ready to go. I'm gonna click okay, and now I have that image in my background. Now, you may notice that's not really much of a background. Why is that? Well, because this image is just about 275 pixels wide by 100 and some pixels deep or high, and that's the image. You might be thinking, well, that's not much of a background, and you're right. So when we're gonna be using an image that's this size, this dimension, we can still use it as a background by doing a couple of tricks. So let's go back to the page properties, go back to style, and what we can do is we can tell 90 Second Website Builder, since this is a small image compared to the size of the page, we can have it repeat this image a number of ways. So for example, if I was to repeat it horizontally across the top, I would end up with a background image that looks like this. That's repeating horizontally across the top, infinitely, by the way. That's better, but what if I wanted to fill the whole page? Well, we can do that too. We'll go back to Page Properties. Under the Style tab, we're going to, instead of repeat horizontally, we'll repeat horizontally and vertically, both directions, in other words. And when we do that, our image fills the page. So you get the idea. This is one way to add a background. And then everything else you put on the page is in the foreground, whether it's layers or videos or images or buttons, whatever you wanna put on your page, this will always be in the background. But let's try some other background tricks since that's what this video is about. And let's do it this way. We're gonna go back to the page properties, the style tab, we're working with images. This time I'm gonna use a different image. Let's use an image that's much bigger. So that image I just used was about 200 by something. Here's an image right here we're gonna use this time. We won't need to do any repeating. I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna select this image, and I'm gonna say don't repeat at all. Watch what happens. Notice that the page is filled with image, and it didn't need to repeat. Now why is that? Well, that's because this is a really huge image. And so if you go look at it, and I'll go to the image itself here in my files, if you hover over this, you'll see this is an image that's 3,000 pixels wide. So it's gonna fill beyond the page. So my point is the size of your image is really gonna matter when you're using it for a background. You wanna take that into consideration. If you're trying to fill your background with image or photo, this is something to consider. Here's another image here that's pretty big, 
2000 pixels. So I could actually use this and it would fill the background. So let's try a couple of other tricks. This time I'm gonna show you how to use some of the settings in the background to create some really cool effects and make your background be what we would call relative. I, again, I'm gonna use an image, but this time I'm gonna go get a different kind of image. I'm gonna to go to this folder and I've got a really nice big image. It happens to be big, it's about 1280 pixels, which is actually about the width of my page. My page is gonna probably end up being 1200 pixels or so. So this will be good. So we'll select this image just to see what this looks like, we're not gonna repeat. I'm gonna click OK, and there's a nice image for my website. Now you'll notice, I'll move the camera a little bit, this image is not necessarily an abstract background with lines or shapes, it's an actual photograph that has a subject. In this case, the subject is a hot air balloon. And I wanna take that into consideration if I'm gonna use that as my image background, and I'll show you what I mean. First of all, let's preview what we have. I'm gonna click F5 because that brings up a browser and we can preview what we've created here. Now you'll notice that as I change the size of this browser, that image doesn't do anything. It just stays fixed in place. So if someone was to look at this website in a really small browser, like on a tablet or on a laptop, they may only see up to here. Whereas a person looking at it on a really big screen might be out to here. And in fact, if they have a really, really big screen, they'd ultimately see the edge of this image because it does end and they would see white space. So let's deal with that. Let's close this up and let's see what we can do to make this image really fill the background no matter what size the browser is. I'm gonna right click, go to page properties, again, style tab, this time, we're still gonna use this hot air balloon, but watch what we do. We're gonna use one of these settings here. Now, fixed is the default one we just saw. We saw what happens when it's fixed. But I'm gonna use one here called cover. I'm gonna have the image cover the background no matter what size the browser window is. I'll show you what I mean. So by selecting cover, and we click OK, watch what happens now when I F5 this or preview this. Okay, I'm back to having my background with the uh, balloon image, but watch what happens when we change the shape of this window. Notice that the hot air balloon moves around and accommodates this to a certain degree. Now if we go all the way in here like this, there is some limitation. We might cut some of it off, but of course very few people are going to see it this small except on a mobile phone. But you can see that what it's doing is it's keeping what's called the aspect ratio. And the reason it does that, and the reason why cover is a good choice, is because it's preventing this image from being distorted. No matter what size a person was to look at this image, what size their browser, it would look decent. It might not look exact, but it will look decent and it won't look distorted. And in fact, it will cover that browser window no matter what size it is. Again, that's the cover mode. Let me show you a difference. We're gonna go back to the page properties, again to the style tab so we can work with the background image. Instead of cover, let's use one called 100%. Now this one will not keep the aspect ratio. It's working with percentages. It'll still be relative, but in a different way. And this is important to note. So we click OK, we're gonna click F5, and watch what happens. And by the way, you'll notice the balloon is a little bit weird shape because it's not so round, and here's why. Since we're using percentages, notice that the aspect ratio does not stay the same. Even though the balloon and the image stays in the background, it doesn't look right unless my browser matches the aspect ratio of that image like this. So if somebody was to look at it in a distorted way, it could look kind of funky. So how would I know whether to use the 100% or the cover? Well, that's gonna depend on the content of the image. So if you had an image that had, for example, people's faces, you probably wouldn't want this mode because they could come out distorted. This might be better for say water or sky or some kind of abstract background. But since I have that balloon there, it looks funny when it gets skinny. That's what the mobile would look like if I used 100%. So that's why I prefer in this case to use the cover, which was this one. I'll let you experiment with some of those others, but those are the most common settings for the background, and it gives you a lot to work with. And again, just so you can see why the cover was better in this case, because it kept that aspect ratio. And that looks a lot better. So before we move on with backgrounds, I'm gonna show you one more trick. 
because one of the great things about this software is you can also have in your background not only an image, but instead you could use a video. Let me show you how that works. I've got another page here set up already with no background. And all I've done is I've put a YouTube object on the page here. Now you'll notice this YouTube object is very small. The reason for that is because it doesn't matter where the object is going to sit on the page because it's going to become background. So it can be off in the corner like this. Here's the trick. When we open up this YouTube object, what we've done is we've selected a very important box right here. Fill entire browser window. By simply checking this box, we're making this video be the background of the website. So if we were to uncheck this box, this would be like any other video and it would play up here. In fact, we'd probably want to put it in a more sensible location and play it like this. And then we'd see our video. If we press F5, you can see we basically have a white page with a YouTube video in the middle of it that's loading right now because it's kind of slow, but there it is. And there's our video. It's a really cool video of planet Earth. But what we're going to do in this case is we're going to make it fill the background. So we don't need to put it any specific spot on the page. We're going to put it off to the side. And again, we're going to change one setting, fill entire browser window. That's all we're doing. And by doing that, watch this really cool effect. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click F5 to preview. And now watch what the video does. It's loading from YouTube and here it comes. Now this is a really amazing thing you can do. And when you have a video like this, and again, it depends on how good this video is, you can make a really, really dramatic landing pages, lead capture pages, or any kind of website you want with moving picture behind it. And it's, as you can see, it's very simple to do. It's a matter of grabbing the YouTube video you want and making it full page. And you want to use videos that are going to make sense to do this, something that's not something that loops correctly or whatever. But the point is you can put video into your website as the background and anything that we put over top of this will sit on top. So while we have this video background, we can also put other objects here. So let's go do that. I'll show you what I have. I've already made some, so I'm going to show them here. Okay. These are some objects I had before I just made them visible. Here I have a text object and inside of a layer and this is a button. So when I click the F5, you can see that they will be in the foreground of my video. And with the background playing my nice Planet Earth video, it makes for a great landing page. So that's just the beginning of working with backgrounds. As you can see, you have a lot of options, whether you use solid colors, gradients, images, or even moving video. It's easy to make backgrounds that look really good in 90 Second Website Builder.